What's good, listeners? Joining us live on Striker Court is Denver, Colorado, Pop Punk Kings, Barry Mia, live on the Chris College Show, Millennial Talk Show. Also, check out my latest episode with Nashville country star Amanda Cooksey, out now on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. That is my off-the-fret music podcast, but how you doing, gentlemen? Doing, doing good, awesome. Doing, doing awesome. Nice to be here. Oh, uh, well, hey, we appreciate you, brother, because... In the end, we do got the Pop Punk Kings. And at the very top of your homepage, on your band's website, it reads, Reinventing Pop Punk. Uh, how is Barry Mia doing this? That's a good question. I mean, I think we're, uh, you know, we're super inspired by a lot of, like, the early 2000s bands. And we're just trying to take some of that music, some of the the brand new, the Taking Back Sunday, the Blink-182, and kind of reprocess it through our ears and, and try to make some good stuff. So we're just trying to make a, make something new. It should be fun. No, I think that's super badass. Awesome. And when it comes to, you know, pop punk bands and the sound today, I mean, how is the genre deferred from the early 2000s? I think it's matured. Um, I mean, you have all these kids that were in high school when the, the genre was kind of coming out. And now everyone's, you know, in college or they're, you know, adults working a, you know, 40 hour work week or whatever. Um, so you kind of see that um, in the genre itself that we're learning as musicians as well as adults and kind of putting that in our music. I think that's a good point you just referenced because I think you have matured. I mean, I'm looking at your song title right now for your brand new single, and I don't know too many of the youth that would be relating to this right now, but literally, quote, the title is called, We've Been Trying to Reach You About Your Car's Extended Warranty. Dude, I get that's, that uh, freaking <laughs> phone call two to three times a day. Two to three. It's like, I bought a new car, and I guess I got like, this is like 10 years ago I bought a new car. And I swear for like last four years, I've gotten this message two to three times a day. It drives me crazy. So are it you does. saying that you've seen a change in the fan base when it comes to the pop punk scene? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean myself in the crowd too, like you go to, to any shows and you notice um, it's a little bit of an, an older crowd, not old necessarily, but mm -hmm. um, adults that are like, you know what? I got to take my, you know, like ibuprofen before I go in the pit. <laughs> Because I know that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you going to be the person that's wearing a back brace too when you jump in? I, I definitely probably will be in the next year or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, no uh, stage diving from you. Oh, no, you got to keep stage diving. You got to keep stage diving. You got to get a couple more drinks, four ibuprofens, and you are good to go. <laughs> I don't know, because if <laughs> Devin's head hits the canvas, it's going to be called Barry Devin at the end of uh, the show. Okay, so that. let's keep it with the, the band that. name that we got right now. But since I was already kind of setting the tone, you guys got a, an amazing brand new single uh, that cracks me up with how long the time title track is because it, think, it reminds me of the early days with like bands like Chiodos, <laughs> you Absolutely. know, that would just love to just, you know, you just love to see your media player just keep scrolling and scanning. I think it's so freaking hilarious. So what, tell us about the inspiration behind this song. Uh, the inspiration behind the song um, is a lot of like uh, mental health issues. So kind of like being stuck inside, um, basically stuck inside like quarantine and stuff, um, not doing much, kind of getting back to the new ways um, and trying to reach out to people that maybe you haven't reached out to in a while. Did it kind of feel like that as a band as a whole where, you know, yeah, we've been isolated for so long and we haven't had that, that live interaction that we get at live concerts. And did you feel the weight of all that when it became time to actually get the locomotive going for Barry Mia to, get going and activate and rock and roll. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, a absolutely true. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people realize that musicians and artists in general, you know, we may not be like the the most sane individuals around. I think um, we do our best to uh, to put a lot of our mental health issues sometimes into music. And so when something like quarantine happens and you're suddenly looking at like, we're not going to be able to play shows for six months or something along those lines. I don't know. It's defeating. Um, and I, th I think you hear a lot of that in car warranty, which is what we call it for short. Um, yeah, absolutely. So when you went through this uh, defeating moment, I mean, how did you guys utilize your time as a band? Was it recording new music? Was it polishing up your live sound? Uh, talk to me. It was a little bit of all of it, man. Um, so at first we didn't know what the hell to do. Cause you're like, 
uh, how do we communicate? Do we FaceTime each other and do like a FaceTime band practice? How do we do this? Um, so um, once things kind of settled up a little bit, we got together. Uh, we worked on a lot of new music. We worked on um, kind of tone, how we wanted to sound and where we wanted to kind of take Barry Mia to the next level. Very cool, man. And like, what is the message that you hope that your fans and even the brand new listeners from the CCS family will take away from your new single? I mean, reach out um, to people, you know, they're having a hard time. Not everyone uh, is living, you know, perfect. Um, reach out to those people you think are struggling. They'd appreciate the phone call. They'd appreciate just talking, even a text, um, just checking in, just checking on your friends, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one, brother. I mean, sometimes I'm just as guilty. I mean, I think that's, you know, the pun with your song title, you know, the extended car <laughs> warranty, kind of like my co-host Marissa Pitts was joking about, because I feel like with our generation, I know Marissa hates me for this, but like, I don't create a voicemail. I hate it. I hate it. It drives up the phone. me <laughs> so nuts. Like, if I can't leave you a message, because I'm a little old school, I get so upset. <laughs> So what is so up upset. with that with our generation? Like, I don't really know the answer to it. I mean, I have no problem picking up the phone. It's just like, I'm just like, that's, that's the old way. Is that, is sometimes the old way not always good to stick with or what? <laughs> right. Well, I think what's kind of cool too. And, um, you know, even though social media has something kind of removed like a fakeness to it, I've kept in contact with a lot of my friends who I don't necessarily text or call, um, through social media. I mean, do you do you guys feel that social media is a way to reach out or does it just seem too far removed and fake and you should call and pick up the phone? I mean, I feel like it's a good way to reach out. But at the end of the day, like a lot of what you see on social media is still just like what somebody's putting as their best foot for. You don't mm -hmm. see a lot of yeah. the, the like the trauma and, and really what's going on. I mean, even just myself, uh, you know, what was this? Twenty twenty one. My dad died and my daughter was born and almost died in the process right around the same time. Oh, scary. You know? And I'm sure if you look at my Facebook, none of, none of that's on there. You know, nothing's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram is like yeah. band stuff, you know, so people don't know that stuff. And, and yeah, I, I think, and I agree with that. You got to reach out. And especially I think within like men's mental health. I mean, I, I know it's been kind of taboo for a while, but man, yes. I feel like, Go to therapy, man. Like I, I'm a huge like proponent of therapy. Like if you're feeling it, go. But we also got to be our own therapists and and do that for our friends. And well. therapy should be a lot cheaper. Oh yeah, I know. I look too. into it, man, and I can't afford it. I'm sorry, I cannot afford therapy. Um, I look at stuff. They want seventy five dollars for an hour. I can barely pay my bills. Well, yeah. I, to me, I know the best kind of therapy is listening to kick-ass music. Yeah. And I know yeah. with what you guys are doing with your brand new single. And again, I'm not going to cut it short. I will say the full title, okay? I promise that. <laughs> very the song that we put together for a lyric video here on the Chris College Show is called We've Been Trying to Reach You About Your Car's Extended Warranty live on the Chris College Show Millennial Talk Show. It's time to rock and roll, baby.
Yeah, Woo! that's what's good. That is the brand new single by the Denver Pop Punk Kings, Barry Mia. The song is called We've Been Trying to Reach You About Your Car's Extended Warranty. <laughs> and gentlemen, please, Fabulous. we need a visual for that badass track. It is so freaking good. I know that is like the very first tease to brand new music, but I've been seeing online. You guys are working out a brand new EP in the works. Is that what I'm hearing? Ooh. We're thinking so. Um, we have a release plan for a couple more singles to come out in the coming months. Um, and then we hit back into the studio a little bit in uh, what, Early June. 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 Nice. And so how does Barry Mia prepare to enter the studio to record new music? Is there anything that you like to bring in or do you guys just go, I got nothing. Let's figure it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we basically so we'll we'll have our songs fully polished um to what Barry Mia's standards are. Um so we'll basically lock ourselves in our studio. Okay, and, and that's like, a that's right. an interesting point. You just said there's a standard. Okay. And what yeah. is that standard that's set in place? Um basically that everyone is kind of happy with what they've written as well as the other parts. So we mm -hmm. kind of know what tone we're going for in the song. Um, and no one's just kind of like, eh, I'm kind of off about this Were well, are you part. guys still in isolation? I mean, are you guys sending like MP3 tracks to each other? Or are you guys actually getting together in one location? It's a, li it's a little bit of both. Uh, most of the time we'll lock uh, all four of ourselves in our studio and we'll just kind of play and, and kind of see what comes of it. Spend hours on, you know, working on the melodies and the guitar tracks. Um, but then we'll also individually, you know, record on our own time and send messages out and be like, hey, listen, look what I did in my basement. And I, I like that a lot. So, like, walk <laughs> us through, like, the creative process on, like, how the band writes and record music. I mean, how do you guys approach bringing your vision to life? I mean, I think a lot of the times it's going to start with, like, one riff that is really catchy. I mean, for a car warranty, you hear that that opening riff in the guitar. That's really what started it all off, along with a drum beat that our drummer Marcus came up with. And it just goes from there. Uh, sometimes, you know, like, Devin or I will bring kind of a fully formed song to the practice. But usually we're kind of starting off with some core material and then just everybody's layering on top of it. Um, so it's pretty cool. I think, you know, we're kind of on like the DIY budget plan a lot of the time. Uh, so we like try to go to into the studio with everything prepared. So we're, we're kind of set up. I like that DIY uh, budget plan. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. That does definitely make sense. You know, you want to utilize every uh, time and dollar <laughs> when yeah, you jump exactly. into that studio space. And since you were talking about how usually you produce the melodies first, but I can only imagine when you guys start coming up with the lyrical content, you might have to like revise your lyrics. So it, fits like the overall mood or tone of the song uh do you remember a time when you guys had to do that recently um i mean yeah with with car warranty and our other two singles um basically every bury me a song starts with complete gibberish um <laughs> we have no idea what the hell we're saying it's just like words flying at the wall um and then we'll go to like the iphone recordings and be like oh this makes sense oh, okay we can we can add this here and that and kind of get a mood for it i would say lyrics probably take the longest yeah out of yeah, writing yeah. no that, that definitely makes sense and let's pull the plug and stick our lines in a different amp because i want to riff about something different right now and one of those things is the music industry which you guys are clearly in and so what is your opinion on uh music streaming services and their impact on the music scene I mean, I, I think if you do them right, um, you can definitely see bonus potential. Um, a lot of it, I think right now, is regulated towards um, building artists opposed to having them profit off of the um, sites like Spotify, um, Apple Music and stuff is you don't see a lot of profit off of it, but it can help you grow um, when you know you're trying to send an EPK out and you're trying to build yourself and book these next shows is um, the higher that your streaming services um, show you kind of plays on your songs kind of shows how popular you you kind of are. Oh yeah, absolutely. But do you think like Apple music and Spotify have helped or hurt, you know, the financial viability of musicians today? Um, I, I like think, I, was saying, I feel like it's made it a lot easier for the little guys to get their foot in the door. I mean, mm. Our first few tracks were recorded in my basement with like, you know, just a basic computer setup and almost nothing else. And the reality is 
if we weren't able to do that, we wouldn't be able to do any of the things that we're doing right now. And that was able to turn us into getting music online. And now, you know, suddenly there's individuals in the Philippines or France listening to our songs because of something like Spotify. But I think there's a point kind of after that, once you've got your foot in the door and kind of understood it, where now you can't make any money off of it. So it's, it's, giving access to everybody but man is it kind of like cutting us like cutting us down to the knees as far as like actually trying to you know make a living which is the yeah i'm shocked you still have your achilles because you know uh you know gohora <laughs> fans you know they've been uh heavily criticizing the group because uh they've been touring recently and merchandise has been a heavy topic in the last two months Ooh, yeah. and what do fans need to know about touring artists and the fees that you know because i mean they're even talking about how uh even they want to cut at the bar because merchandise cuts are being taken from the venue so you guys have a, a stance on that um i mean i think any any retail like if you're going out and you're putting yourself into selling the goods and stuff you should be able to take that especially for touring bands um it's hard enough touring as it is uh, with budgets and being able to get to the next city, let alone, you know, uh, a venue or someone taking 20% of your merch sales, which I know it's goes as high as 40. I've heard. Yeah, um, that's crazy. And I, I think <laughs> merchant merchandising should be left alone. We've been lucky enough um, that we haven't seen any contracts or anything with um, a cut of merch sales, luckily. Um, but I know what's out there. Or what do you think about uh, dynamic pricing? Because, you know, first dynamic pricing got going with like Bruce Springsteen and Taylor Swift, but now it's uh, it gone and dripped its way into the pop punk world with Blink-182. Are you guys familiar with what dynamic pricing is with Ticketmaster and Live Nation? Yeah, yes, horrible. Sir. horrible. Yeah, and I mean, it, isn't that like, a shitty thing because there's a lot of joke in the pop punk world like i mean myself personally i've already said it numerous times on air i love blink 182 but they are a three chord progression band i'm not paying 300 dollars to sit way in the back don't you think that's a disservice for the new generation that wants to go and see a show who didn't grow up with warp tour matter of fact you know to I go agree. and see an awful was, lot of groups yeah i was about to say i was like yeah i mean warp tour you spend 25 bucks and you get to yeah. see you know countless amount of bands back in our day but now, yeah, you have to pay three hundred dollars to get nosebleeds to see Blink One Eighty Two, and maybe you could maybe make out Tom's head. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, I, yeah, you you gonna have to need binoculars, you know, like when yeah, you go to exactly. the ballpark you're like, when you're up on a uh, section three hundred six. <laughs> oh my God, it's him. <laughs> So uh, true, guys. Uh, very, very true. And uh, we wanted to make sure we have enough time to be playing a, a actual visual. You guys got an amazing music video that you guys did with the previous release. And the song is called Train Rex. It's spelled T-R-N-W-R-C-K. So if you want to look up that single right after the show or just type in Bury Me. I don't know why I made it that difficult. <laughs> but we're going to be playing the official right now live on the Chris College Show, Millennial Talk Show. So Marissa, let's get it on, fam. If I paid attention, would you come in? Yeah. 
train wreck and that is out on youtube or wherever you listen to your music streaming platforms but gentlemen thank you so much for joining the chris college show millennial talk show and what are your plans for the coming months um so immediately tonight we have a show at a globe hall surf in the denver surrounding area come out Sweet. Um, we'll so we're gonna celebrate that St. Patty's day huh gonna oh, get yeah. <laughs> i love it green so beer what's, so what's the drink of choice uh, drink of choice is gonna be Bear fights. Bear fights? Bear fights? <laughs> okay, bear What's fights. That? If you know what a bear, bear fight is, it is yeah. a drop shot. You basically mix a car bomb with the Jaeger bomb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and it's beer okay. Yep. I didn't know it was called a beer shot. I've done those. Those are deadly. No, you should only do no, no, no. maybe two. Maybe two if you plan on singing. <laughs> you plan on anything. <laughs> well, you guys have been awesome souls. We <laughs> cannot wait to hear more music from you guys. You're more than welcome to come back on Strike Accord, and we'd love to talk about your guys' new potential full-length LP or EP in the works. So thank you again. Kudos, kudos, kudos. Absolutely. Big shows oh, and yeah. probably a tour this year, so we're excited. Yes, Rock love it. Roll. 